when you're using two lines to move a load, each with a braking strength of 700 kilograms, it would be reasonable to expect that you'd be able to move a 1400 kilogram load. Not in this double joker configuration though. The braking strength that the manufacturer comes up with has to go through a series of reductions to get an actual figure for the lifting capacity of the hardware you're using. Whether it's lifting or towing, whatever the case may be. I'm gonna walk you through the steps how to go through those reduction factors. The first one is safety factor. The safety factor is in place because as is you can see the load is static. That word static means it's standing still. The load in reality will be say in lifting it would be lowered and as long as it's moving at an even steady speed or pace it's not a problem but when it stopped it gets yanked and when it's when the lifting starts it also gets yanked a little bit that extra stress placed on the ropes have to be accommodated somehow also there is wind uh, during lifting the uh, wind in just you picture this one in a spectacularly bad scenario it could be so bad that only one of the legs on the choker would hold the load and the other one would be slack okay that would be a really bad scenario but that uh, with that in your mind you understand now why safety factor is important so in this calculation I'm gonna use a safety factor of four in some engineering designs a safety factor of 5, 8 or 10 is used. For now I'm gonna use 4. Uh, if you want you can change the safety factor to be a different number but I'm gonna use 4 for this calculation. The math is the same you can just change it and make it work for your needs. So the 700 kilograms needs to be divided by 4 right away 175 and the same for the Imperial I'm gonna do this side by side blue for metric and black for Imperial you'll see numbers different math identical 50 and 50 divided by 4 is I'm gonna go 388 just so I don't have decimal numbers getting fractured 388 eight pounds so that's the first reduction and you can do these reductions in any order I'll show you at the end of the calculation because most of them will be multiplications and multiplication is commutative so you can do them in uh, any order you like the next factor is the not efficiency factor there. Take a look at the choker here. On this double choker I have two knots. The braking strength or ultimate tensile strength that I also wrote on the paper here for ultimate tensile strength. I just didn't want to write BS you know for braking strength. Is when the manufacturer tests this length of rope and puts it in a machine and the full cross section of the of the rope or piece of hardware whatever is being tested is pulled apart and it fails at that load rating okay that's when it breaks now that again is just a straight piece of rope with no knots no anything else so the knot efficiency factor needs to be considered because there's a knot tied on it there to make that loop at the end and there's another loop here for the uh, choker to be formed so those need to be considered my not efficiency factor is up for discussion I'm gonna use 50% and 50% in decimal is looking like that 
you might want to work in climbing, climbing sports, you know. You might want to go with an 80% reduction. I'm going to go with a harsh 50% reduction, okay? So, the 175 needs to be multiplied with 0 0.5 and get one number there. And the 388 gets multiplied with that number and get another number there. This is how it looks like. 175 times 175 times 0 0.5 87 and a half. Can I go 88 pounds? Same way I don't want to work with too many decimal digits. 88 there and 388 times 0.5 for the 50% 194. 194 pounds. Okay, two done. Two more to do. Two more to go. There's two more reduction factors. I'm just gonna copy those numbers on top of the next sheet here. 194 and 88. The next reduction factor comes from the fact that these legs on the choker are forming an angle. If it was a vertical single choker, it wouldn't be an issue but it is now your your choker for your load is gonna be self tight in itself to form its own angle it's always gonna be different okay in this case the legs on the choker form this angle you need two measurements for this one you need a headroom measurement that's a vertical measurement from the top of the hook here where the two lines on this triangle meet that one there and that one there and they form the apex of the triangle there from that point you measure down vertically there plumb bob in the direction of a plumb bob vertically down to the middle of the load here and another one measurement is the length of your line here now in this case the length of your line goes from the hook to the edge don't measure to the edge no no that's just an optical illusion if you look at it from this camera angle this way here now you can see that it's one continuous line. You're going to measure from the top of the hook there, along this line, here to the middle of the load, thereabouts. Okay? Just ignore this part of the setup, okay? And uh, these two measurements are also represented by this big paper triangle that I made. This is how it looks like. There you go. It belongs there. So there's the apex of the triangle there. There's the headroom measurement coming down vertically to the middle of the load. And there is length, okay? So don't measure headroom from the hook to the edge of the load just because the choker is touching the edge of the load there. No, no, don't go there. You have to measure it this way for headroom and that way for length. That this triangle needs to be in one plane and needs to be plumb, like so. See? That's your measuring point there on the load for length. There, I have already taken measurements and my measurements are on this triangle. 14 inches or 355 millimeter for headroom. And for length, I've got 19 and a quarter inches or 490 millimeters. Those are the numbers that we can use here. And these two numbers form a fraction. And this is how they look like. It's going to be a multiplication by this fraction where headroom is the numerator and length is the denominator. Same for the metric side. And if I write up the numbers, I've got 14 over 19 and a quarter and 355 over 490 now these two fractions are equivalent fractions that's why they work both in metric and imperial okay because these are equivalent fractions and uh, that one has fewer numbers to enter in the calculator so i'm just gonna go with that one 
but they are the same okay 14 over 19.25 equals that number I'm just gonna not round it I'm just gonna truncate it there 0 0.72 So that's my next reduction factor. The 192 needs to be multiplied with that number. 194, yes. 194 times 0 0.72 equals 140 pounds. And the same works with the metric. 88 times 0.72 63 kilograms now again I'm not insulting your intelligence I'm just gonna repeat it make sure it's clear that uh, 88 was multiplied with that number because that number that 0 0.72 is the same as you get out of that fraction because these two are equivalent fractions so that's why it was used so that's one triangle down we have one more part of the choker that needs to be considered and that part is at the end of the choker here is making another triangle with the load and the width of the load is dictating this one partly and another part is how the loop on the choker comes to a resting point on the main leg of the choker you're gonna need to take two more measurements for this one for headroom again and one for length. Length is gonna be kinda of obvious because this is the direction how the length of the rope runs so we just measure that one. When the headroom and where your triangle is is gonna be different. Your triangle is gonna be in this plane. Don't measure down vertically, okay? That's not gonna work really well. You're gonna have to measure headroom this way okay on an angle in the direction of the line of the choker my second triangle that I made is gonna show just that there we go so there's headroom and there's length okay that's why you take those measurements in this one plane okay don't try to turn it this way it's not the same triangle there see it's the same length but it's a different headroom no don't go there it has to be measured this way okay just remember that now those numbers are again on the back side of my triangle and they are five and an eighth of an inch or 130 millimeters and eight and a half inches or 250 millimeters that's gonna give us two more fractions and it's gonna be another multiplication again headroom over length and five and an eighth and eight is one divided by eight is that decimal so that's gonna be five point one two five divided by that was eight point five so there's one fraction and the other one is also also had removal length and that's 130 over 215 and this time I'm gonna enter that one in the calculator because again these are equivalent fractions and they will give you the same decimal value so 130 divided by 215 was 0 0.604 so I'm gonna truncate it here at 0 0.60 well that last zero is a redundant zero so I'm just gonna write 0 0.6 okay 0 0.6 if you enter that in the calculator you're gonna get the same 0 0.6 guaranteed so now 63 needs to be multiplied by that 0 0.6 And we've got 37.8. I'm just going to round it to 38 kilograms. 
And on the other side, we've got 140 multiplied by 0 0.6. That's 84 pounds here. There we have it. So on a single line, this is the, after all reduction is done, there you can take a look at the whole trip. After all the reductions are done, all four, the safety factor, the knot efficiency, one of the load triangles and the second one of the load triangles, we arrived from a 700 kilogram braking strength to 38 kilograms. Now if you exceed that 38 kilograms and using the using two lines that would be a maximum a maximum lift of 76 kilograms on this side and the maximum lift of two of those that's eight and that's one six 168 pounds so if you exceed the 76 kilogram maximum lifting capacity for the for the hardware that you have it's not gonna break that's why we have the safety factor built into it it will take a little bit of a bounce and a little bit of a sway and a little bit of a miscalculation or mismeasurement or misreading the tape measure that's what the safety factor is for so it's not gonna fail if you exceed that by oh, one two or five kilograms but you shouldn't be exceeding that by any significant amount lastly in terms of mathematics these four steps the safety factor the knot efficiency and these two load triangles the like I said they don't need to be calculated in this exact order they can be done in any order because multiplication is commutative let me just write it up in another format if you multiply 700 by 0 0.5 and by the other number was 0 0.6 and the other number was 0 0.72 and divide it by 4. As long as you have all of those multiplications done and that one division is also done in it somewhere along the line at one point you are gonna get the 38 kilogram safe working load that's applicable to this double choker configuration. Yeah, I'll just show you in 10 seconds and because you can start anyway, you can start there if you like 0 0.6 times 0 0.5 I just have to press equal all the time times 700 times 0.72 divided by 4 there, there's my 37.8 which I rounded up to 38 kilograms. See, it's the same order of operation here you are at liberty with. Same works with the imperial side, of course. So that's a little bit of flexibility when you're working with the formulas or, or procedures. And that's how you can calculate this double choker.